Hey, my name is Gabe Weaver. I'm a senior product manager for the plan group within, uh, or for the project management group within the plan stage. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our goals for 2021 and what we hope to accomplish. Uh, as I go through some of these things, keep in mind all these issues are public. We welcome your collaboration on them. Uh, these direction pages are also public. I'll drop them into the description of the video. Um, and uh, you're welcome to read through them and provide feedback. Uh, we want to really kind of serve you, uh, our customer and our user in the wider community and your involvement in planning. And our future is super important um, and it's a great sensing mechanism for us product managers. So please feel free to get involved in providing feedback. So for 2021, we have a couple of key themes. Um, Within my group in particular uh, and product planning, we're collaborating on creating best in class boards. Um, uh, we're also working towards improving uh, iterations and planning for the single teams. Uh, we have got some usability improvements that I'm going to cover. Um, we also want to look more at our portfolio level planning and improving our roadmaps, um, supporting the use case of strategic planning uh, of initiatives uh, using epics and issue types. Um, and then we've got some great improvements in line for requirements and quality management. So jumping down into, and you can kind of see over here, each uh, each um, the stage basically has broken down in a bunch of different categories that each have their own direction pages um, that kind of have more details for each of these themes. So I'm going to hop over to the issue tracking direction page first. Um, in terms of where we're headed, what's next and why, um, kind of touching on some high level things. In terms of usability, we're looking to uh, kind of combine uh, the feature and bring feature parity between groups and projects at a high level. So right now, one of the problems just within plan, for example, is you have epics at the group level, you have issues at the project level. It makes it really just disjointed planning experience where you have to hop between the, the group and the, the project in order to do your kind of proper planning breakdowns. So what one of the first things we're going to be doing is making sure that issues are available at the group level, epics are available at, at the project level, and doing this in a way that doesn't duplicate the code or duplicate the effort required to implement and maintain these, um, these features at the different levels of our knowledge, knowledge architecture. Next, in terms of iterations right now, you can create a single uh, set of iterations within a group and um, that kind of is inherited down, but we found that teams, uh, many teams work within a single group. GitLab's a great example where we have, I don't know, 20 or 30 different prog teams all uh, doing their issue tracking uh, and planning and, and management of their work streams within a single group. And so what we need to do is support multiple groups um, or multiple iteration cadences within the group level. And also we're gonna do, be smart about how we do that and make it so that it can be automated. So kind of there's two parts to this. First is supporting the multiple iteration cadences that kind of follow the same inheritance pattern, um, which we're working on right now. And then after that, we're gonna make it so that uh, cadences can be automated. So you can toggle this automated scheduling um, option. You can select the start date for your cadences, how long each iteration is supposed to be, if you wanna automatically roll over issues and more or less how many future iterations that we should maintain and automatically schedule and create for you. Um, so with this enabled, you can basically always have, you know, anywhere between two and 10 iterations scheduled in the future and have that automated automatically map to your, your board that's scoped to specific cadence. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, once this is in place, we're gonna add support for team velocity and volatility, both within the iteration uh, cadence report view, as well as directly within board. So when you're planning out and sequencing your work across multiple iterations, it's pretty easy to uh, kind of see all the upcoming iterations and drag and drop issues into them from epics and things like that. So um, this will help teams plan a little bit more realistically uh, and set better expectations. Another huge usability need is uh, kind of providing more extensible issues. So right now um, you can't create custom fields. Uh, we, we basically do a lot of the uh, management of issues through labels. And so we need to take kind of some of the key use cases for labels and turn them into first class experiences. Um, one of the things that we're gonna be doing to support that is um, uh, adding custom issue types. So you, you will ship with some same defaults. But um, if you're in premium or above, you'll be able to actually define custom issue types as well as the relationship between those and a work item breakdown hierarchy. Um, we're gonna be supporting uh, custom uh, issue um, stat statuses. Uh, so, so more or less like um, right now we have open and closed state, but we wanna support some more of those um, and the, the kind of better map to the, the reality of kind of the state of the issue as well as allow you to define uh, customizable 
uh, statuses with each of the states. Um, this will also lead to better metrics in your value stream reports and other things like that. Um, so we want to allow customizable statuses and map that to issue types. Um, we definitely are going to support at some point later in the year custom fields. Um, we're still working through some of the details of this, but this is a huge ask from our uh, the wider community and something we want to support. Um, kind of want to do this in a way that it makes sense. It also remains performant. So still working out the details, but this is something that is definitely planned for this year. Um, and then also workflows. So once we have statuses in place, that's sort of the, the foundation, the basis for then being able to do workflows on top of that. Um, one of the things I think we're, we're erring towards is not uh, worrying about the enforcement first. Uh, we, we really believe that I think if you focus on automation and simple workflows, um, that's great for 85% of all use cases that I've come across. Uh, and then for those that do require more kind of uh, approval checkpoints or gate, toll gates, we'll probably work with the compliance group to figure out how to apply a, com a compliance framework to uh, workflows as well for those uh, organizations that kind of need more uh, restrictions and control around workflows. So um, when it comes to product planning, there's a lot of improvements that are on the horizon. Um, right now, they're working on Epic boards that should be shipped, hopefully fully uh, ready to go by 14.0. Uh, it will allow you to more or less work with epics in a board the same way you can with issues. So this is going to be pretty exciting. Um, we're also working on going to be working on adding inter, uh, integrating analytics into boards more properly. So things like velocity, like I mentioned earlier, um, we're going to be uh, thinking about how do we surface things like time and list, uh, card aging uh, is another way to think about that. And also um, like stack burn down burn up charts, which is kind of cumulative flow diagrams within boards as well. Um, and so making it so you can have a single kind of board experience uh, for individual teams, it's, that's the only place you need to go to, to track a play in their work and understand um, some of the base metrics around that. We also um, shipped uh, an MVC for Epic swim lanes in boards in 13.5, but we wanna add swim lanes for all sorts of other things like health status assignees, labels, uh, and so on and so forth. So like any attribute sort of exists on an issue that would make sense to kind of slice um, into swim lanes, we want to support that. Uh, and we'll continue adding support for those throughout the year. From the certified group, um, who's responsible for requirements and quality management, um, one of the kind of big needs has been around uh, multi-level uh, requirements. So as you think about a requirement, it's a long-lived artifact, whereas an issue in our epic is temporal for planning. An artifact or a requirement is actually um, used to kind of trace the completeness of work, um, not just like if it's done, but is it complete? Um, so right now you can tie a requirement to a test uh, via pipelines and the config file for CICD. Um, but what we, customers really want is the ability to have these kind of multi breakdown decomposition of requirements into sub requirements. So similar to like what we have for epics, we're actually going to kind of take some of the work that some of the things we learned from epics and abstract that out so that we can easily apply it to things like um, uh, requirements and the requirements tree view, as well as what we'll get to in a minute with test sessions and test cases. Um, but allowing requirements at the group level is another thing kind of goes back to that theme of having parity between groups of projects and features. Um, we're going to be working towards that so that we can have decomposed requirements that are along with artifacts at both the group and the project. Um, and then also getting into quality management, um, improving test cases, uh, linking those to test sessions and kind of having that same kind of hierarchy of, of uh, test, test suites, test sessions, test cases. And then really focusing on what it means to uh, build traceability relationships between all these objects. So we have epics and we have issues, we have requirements, we're gonna have nested requirements, we have test cases, but really like all of these relate to the same kind of stream of work. And we wanna do a really good job of being able to tie those together uh, to one another, as well as other objects in GitLab, like vulnerabilities or incidents or feature flags, for example, and making it so that you do have really easy end end traceability with as minimal uh, manual linking and effort required there. Um, so really thinking about streamlining that kind of traceability process. So those are some of the things that are on deck for 2021. I'm pretty excited about it. If you have any questions, feedback, uh, please jump into an issue or reach out to one of the product managers of plan. Thanks for checking us out.